Okay. Talking about this 1% every day, uh, you know, when people hear that in their minds, they're just like, oh, it's so tiny, it doesn't matter. Mm. Well, what, what, what is the thought process behind this 1% every day? Well, so just a quick story that I like that I feel like illustrates the point. Um, so we're in uh, the UK, and uh, for many years, the British cycling team was very mediocre. Uh, they had never won a Tour de France, uh, even though the race had been around over 100 years. They had won, I think, a single gold medal back in 1908. And so uh, they brought in this new performance director, 2003, 2004, and he believed in this concept that he called the aggregation of marginal gains. And so he described it as like the 1% improvement in all the areas related to cycling. And so they started by making 1% improvements that uh, other teams were probably looking at too, put slightly lighter tires on the bike. They had their riders wear these electrically heated over shorts to keep their, their legs warm so they could ride for longer. Um, they uh, had um, different biofeedback sensors that each rider would wear, and then they adjusted the programs to each individual. But again, competitive field, a lot of teams are doing that. So then they did a bunch of 1% changes that nobody else was thinking about. Like they hired a surgeon to come in and teach them how to wash their hands to reduce the risk of catching the cold or getting a flu. Um, they split tested different types of massage gels to see which one led to the fastest form of muscle recovery. They, uh, they even figured out the type of pillow and mattress that led to the best night's sleep for each rider. And then they brought that on the road with them to big events like when they were at hotels for the Tour de France and things like that. And so uh, Brailsford said, all right, if we can, the coach said, if we can actually do this, right, execute on all these little 1% changes, then I think we can win a Tour de France within five years. Right, now he must have had to really sell people on this because you can already see the naysayers and we're in Britain as well, where they're going to be like, come on, this yeah. is ridiculous. Right, well, and <laughs> it just, uh, no single change seemed like very much, right? Yeah. So one of the changes they made was they had their outdoor riders switch to indoor racing suits because they tested them in a wind tunnel and turns out the indoor suits were a little more aerodynamic, which, you know, you think, all right, whatever, I got like basically skin tight clothes on either way. How is this going to make much of a difference? Right. Um Anyway, so they did, in fact, execute on all these little changes, and they won the Tour de France not in five years, but in three years, and then they repeated again the fourth year with a different rider, and then after one year off, they've now won the last three in a row again, so they've won five of the last six now, after having never won it for more than 100 years. It's and so, definitely an obvious anomaly. I mean, yeah. You look at it, and you're like, what? Because it's not like we have a cycling culture here or anything. It was just a big anomaly when we saw them massively improve. And so I bring that story up, uh, not because um, I think you know cycling is the perfect example or anything, but just because it's a good story that showcases the power of being committed to making those small improvements each day. And uh, I think that it's not just nice to have, it's not just like a little cherry on top of your performance to make these 1% changes, but they actually can compound and add up in a really significant way in the long run. And habits are a lot like that. They're, they're not exactly like compound interest, you know, where you kind of like hit that hockey stick portion of the curve, but they really feel like that a lot. You know, like we were saying just a few moments ago, it feels insignificant on any day, but then you turn around 10 years later and it's actually, you're surprised by where you end up. And that's a hallmark of any compounding process that the greatest returns are delayed. And so uh, habits are like that too. You know, they, they don't feel like much on any given day, but they really add up over the months and years. And